This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I use MicroMesh? So MicroMesh is the initial version of NanoMesh. So before NanoMesh existed, you could use MicroMesh inside of ZBrush. So I'm gonna go through and show you guys how you can use MicroMesh and then briefly talk about NanoMesh and then also show you something that MicroMesh can do that NanoMesh cannot do. So to start, I have ZBrush loaded up here and I just have Lightbox open. In here, I wanna come across and select the Polysphere project here and just double click to load that in. After this is loaded in, I wanna to navigate to the tool palette. I'm gonna to navigate to the geometry area. I'm gonna set my subdivision level down to subdivision one. And then I'm going to click the Reconstruct Subdivision button here twice. And this is just gonna go through and generate a lower subdivision on my model. So now you can see I have my polysphere looking something like this. And then finally, I wanna come across here and click Delete Higher. So now I've taken my polysphere, I've reconstructed some subdivisions on it and went all the way down to the lowest subdivision level. So now I have a polysphere with about 98 active points. So now the question was asking about MicroMesh. So MicroMesh is located in the tool palette in geometry, and then under the modified topology area, there is a MicroMesh button. Now MicroMesh is going to look at all the polys on your model, and it's going to allow you to replace every single one of those polygons with another piece of geometry. So as an example of this, with the sphere here, if I come over here and click MicroMesh, this is going to open up the Quick Pick menu here. And in this Quick Pick menu, I'm gonna come across this Gear 3D object here and then click this. So I wanna go through and replace every single poly of this sphere with the Gear 3D object. So just locating the Gear 3D and then selecting it. Now, after you select it, you're gonna get this little dialog. And this is basically telling you that MicroMesh will only be visible when using BPR. And that you also need to turn on the Draw MicroMesh option in the Render Palette. So I'm gonna click OK to this, and then I'm gonna navigate up to the Render Palette at the top here and open this up. In here, I'm going to go to the Render Properties area, and then I'm going to enable Draw MicroMesh. Now you'll notice once this is activated, as long as I still have polyframes enabled, you're gonna be able to see the vertices of that gear 3D replicated across every single poly on the model. Now, if you do not see this effect, make sure you have the polyframes turned on. And then you also wanna make sure that the object that you linked after you clicked the MicroMesh button here has a decent amount of topology. So if you have something with only a few vertices, you're not gonna see it on your mesh. So it model needs to be pretty dense to see this on the surface of the sphere. And after you have this linked, if I come up here and click this BPR button, ZBrush is going to now replace all the polys of the sphere with that gear 3D object. Now, before you do this, you probably wanna also disable polyframes. I'm gonna come over here and turn polyframes off. And now I'm gonna click BPR to do that render. And you'll now see that this is the result I get. So instead of the polysphere geometry, I now have a gear 3D object replacing every single one of those polygons. Now currently this is just a render preview. So if I rotate the model again, you're gonna see that effect is going to vanish until I click BPR again. Right now with the MicroMesh being linked, it's only going to be visible when you click BPR. Now I can change the MicroMesh at any time, so I can come back over here and click the MicroMesh button to turn it off, and then click it again, and now I can select a different object. So let's say I select this Helix 3D, and now if I turn my polyframes on, you're gonna see this is the Helix 3D on every single one of those faces. And now if I click BPR, this is the result I get with the Helix 3D. Now let's say I like this render I'm seeing, but I want to convert it to geometry. So to convert this BPR preview to geometry, you just need to navigate back to the tool palette over here, go to the geometry area, and then click this convert BPR to geo. Now when you click this convert BPR to geo button, it's going to look at any of the mesh changes that are happening during that BPR process, and it's going to take that final render that you're seeing and convert it to geometry. 
So you can see this is currently what I have as my model. So it's just that polysphere and it just has those micro mesh in that preview mode. But if I click convert BPR to geo, it's going to capture that BPR geometry. And it's now going to give me a mesh. So now you can see the micro mesh option has been disabled. And now I just have the true geometry of what I was seeing in that BPR render. So all those little helix objects have now replaced every single face of that polysphere. So that is the basic premise and functionality on how to use MicroMesh. Now, as I mentioned earlier, MicroMesh is the initial version of NanoMesh. So if I undo this and get back to my sphere here and then turn off MicroMesh, and now let's do that same process again, but with NanoMesh. So I'm gonna go back to the tool palette over here. I'm gonna select the polysphere here to open up my quick pick menu again. This time I'm gonna come across and select my gear 3D object. So this is the one object that I wanted to replace every single poly on my model. And at this stage, I'm gonna go through the process of creating a nano mesh brush. And then with that nano mesh brush, I can apply that to my polysphere. And it's going to give me the same result I got with the micro mesh, but it's gonna give me a lot more functionality. So with the Gear 3D positioned on my scene like this, I now just need to turn this into an IMM brush. So I'm gonna go to the brush palette over here. I'm gonna go to Create. I'm gonna do Create Insert Mesh, and then click New. So it's gonna take this part and create a new brush inside of ZBrush that contains that 3D part. Now with that brush created, I now need to turn this into a Nano Mesh brush. So I'm gonna go back to the brush palette, and now I'm gonna click Create Nano Mesh Brush. So this is gonna take the insert mesh brush I just created and now convert it to a nano mesh brush. And after this is created, you'll see that the brush has been renamed to a Z modeler brush and it still has that gear 3D part. So now I can go back to my tool palette over here and open this up and then select that polysphere again. So my polysphere here. I'm now going to hover over a poly and you'll see as I hover over a poly on my model here with this nano mesh brush selected, it's going to give me the option of insert nano mesh a poly. So I wanna cover every single poly on the model here. So I'm gonna press space bar to go in the Z modeler poly action menu. In here, you can see my action is set to insert nano mesh. And then my target is set to a single poly. So I wanna change my target to all polygons. It's going to apply a nano mesh across all those polys. And this is gonna give me the same result that I saw earlier when I was using MicroMesh. So coming across the poly and clicking and dragging, and you can see it is now going through and giving me a gear 3D object across every single one of those polygons. Now, if I go back to the tool palette and go down to the NanoMesh area here, you'll see that I now have NanoMesh active. And in here you have a whole bunch of more options you can do with the model that you couldn't do with MicroMesh. So the first thing we have is the show placement. So I can toggle this on and off and see what the mesh would look like without that polysphere or with the polysphere still there. In addition to this, I can change the size of this so I can up my size here. I can turn on fit or fill. Now, if you enable fill when your size is one, this is going to give you an identical result to what we had with MicroMesh. So every single poly on the polysphere here is now filled with that Gear 3D object. And it's also changing the size of the Gear 3D object based on how large or small that individual poly was. So you can see these polys here, which are a little bit skewed, have now skewed that Gear 3D. This is the same effect we were getting with MicroMesh. So if we go back to Proportionate, and then we can change the size here, these will not distort. But if we go to Fill and then set our size to 1, you will now get that distortion. Now, in addition to just getting the same result we had with MicroMesh, we can now change a whole bunch of different options here. So we can change the width on these, we can change the length, we can add random variation across everything, we can change the rotational values. So the nano mesh version of this, or the upgraded version of MicroMesh here, has a lot more functionality and a lot more things you can do with the model. This is gonna give you greater control and allow you to get different results on your meshes. So if you're using MicroMesh or you have been using MicroMesh, I highly suggest trying the nano mesh process and see if you like that workflow better. Now, one final thing that I wanna hit on is a functionality that MicroMesh can do, but NanoMesh cannot. And this is in relation to FiberMesh. 
So I'm gonna hit comma on my keyboard to open Lightbox again here. And in Lightbox, I wanna to navigate to the miscellaneous folder here and open this up. And then in miscellaneous, there is a MicroMesh01 project file right here. It looks something like this. And I just wanna double click this quick and load this in. And after this loads in, if I go to the tool palette and then open up the subtool area, you can see that this file consists of two subtools. So we have a sphere, and then we also have a fiber subtool. So there is some fiber mesh that has been generated from the subtool above this. And if I zoom in on this subtool here and turn on my polyframes, you can see that the fibers here consist of a strip of polygons. And you'll also see the vertex kind of positions of a micro mesh being applied to them. So if I go to the tool palette, go down to the geometry area here, and go to modify topology, you can see that micro mesh is enabled. And the current micro mesh that's applied to this mesh, if I come over here and turn this off and then turn it back on, is this leaf object. So there is a single leaf here. And as you'll notice, when I apply this to this fiber aware subtool, that the micro mesh is no longer just being applied to a single face, but it's being applied to the entire fiber strip. So you can see one micro mesh is being applied across that entire strip. So this is something that nano mesh cannot do. So nano mesh and micro mesh, usually by default, is always going to apply a single micro mesh to every single polygon in your model. So however, if you have a subtool that's been created with fiber mesh, and then you link a micro mesh to that subtool, the micro mesh will be applied across the entire fiber mesh strip rather than each individual poly. So you can see this little leaf here is going from here to here, and it's gonna replace this entire strip. It's not gonna give me individual leaves all the way down. So if I turn off my polyframes and now click BPR, you can see this is the result I'm going to get. So that leaf, which is that single micro mesh, is now replacing the entire strip. And this is also giving this nice kind of deformation that's making these leaves look like they're kind of bending down towards the ground. Now I can also convert this to geometry as well. So going back to the tool palette, going to the geometry palette here, and now clicking Convert BPR to Geo. So once again, since this was a fiber mesh tool, it's going to replace that entire strip with that micro mesh. And now I have a leaf piece of geometry where every single one of those fiber mesh strips existed. So that is a little thing there that you can do with micro mesh that you cannot do with nano mesh. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.